You make a critique of those people, but those elderly, elderly individuals come to Salat al-Fajr, you find them there. You find them there, and where are those young youth who are talking about the return of Islam, the renaissance of Islam, the resurgence of Islam, Salat al-Fajr, where do you find them? Sleeping in their beds. That's a reality. Great dreams, but can't even stroll out of their bed and come to the masjid. And they talk about big, big achievements. That's how you weigh, weigh up the state of the Muslim Ummah. Travel through the Muslim Ummah, come into Salat al-Fajr, and you'll see what the state of the Muslim Ummah is, sleeping. That's the real state of the Muslim Ummah, stagnation. The Muslim Ummah revolves around spirituality. Remember that in great detail. Obviously there's other elements that we need, but spirituality is the main cause. We don't fight with weaponry, or power, or force. That's just a side element. The real power and the force of the believer is his devotion towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if people are not even punctual in the five daily prayers and they're talking about high obstacles or high achievements, they misunderstood Islam. Because even in the realms inside Surah Al-Nisa, even the state of jihad that you find, the Quran still says to the believers that one group should be leading and one group should be standing behind and then they swap positions. This is a station of fighting the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here we find trivial things. I'm moving from this location to that location, combine my prayers, skip my prayers, shorten my prayers, going to university, going here, going there. The first thing in the hadith Tabrani, awwal ma yuhasibu nafs al-abdu yawm al-qiyamah, the first thing the abdu will ask about the day of judgment is his prayer. Khalas. Not about other things. That's the first thing all of us will be asked about. If that has been rectified, everything else will become successful. Sifatul Mu'mineen, characteristics of the believers in Surah Al-Mu'mineen, the 23rd chapter of the Quran. Qad aflah al-mu'mineen, alladheena hum fi salatihim khashi'oon. Simple, that's the characteristics of the believers. Many times inside the Quran, those who guard their prayers, preserve their prayers, worried about their prayers, guard your prayers. Hafidhu la salawati wa salati al-wusta wa qumu lillahi qaniteen. Guard your prayers, and especially the middle prayer. Qawlu al-rajih wa salatu al-asr. Guard the middle prayer. In the hadith we find, whoever misses the middle prayer, the late afternoon prayer, is that they lost their whole, their wealth, all of their family. But we find it trivial. And we talk about other elements. That's the first path to paradise. To be worried about that. Secondly, Imam Nawi mentions, Qadmul Ghayf, to swallow one's anger. How many Muslims do you find are able to swallow their anger? Whoever debates with a person, whoever goes into an argument with a person, and you know that you are correct. You know that you're correct, but you refuse to carry an argument with a person, you restrain yourself. That person is guaranteed a place in paradise, a house in paradise. But when we're debating with someone, we just have to make sure we get the message across. You've just missed your house in paradise. You've missed it. You've missed it. And sometimes you could be debating and you are wrong. But you want to carry on debating just to send home the message. So swallowing one's anger is a characteristic of the path of a person to go into paradise. Thirdly, al-afu, pardoning people. That's something we've forgotten from the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi to overlook people's mistakes, to pardon them, not to question them about it. Anas ibn Malik narrates, Qadamtu Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ashra sinin. I served him for 10 years. 10 years. In that 10 year period, he never said to me, why do you do that? Why didn't you do it like that? Why don't you do it like this? Tasawwaru hadha. Ashra sinin. 10 years. We don't have sabr with a person for 10 minutes. For 10 minutes we don't have sabr with a person. He had 10 years of being in the suhbah of the companionship of the Prophet he never saw anything. Never questioning about what he done. Could have been doing it wrong. No problem. Forgiveness to pardon humanity. Something we forgive him. Forgotten. That is a path to paradise. Fourthly we find a sabr an shahwa To control yourself from temptations which are presented in front of you. Any path of temptation that comes in front of you, have sabr, patience, to not fall into temptations. As we mentioned, <coughs> temptations are a path that leads you towards Jahannam. So this is all the path that a person needs to begin to think upon. That in this journey, upon this world, that I need to begin to follow the path of the people of paradise. If I want to become amongst the people of paradise, or to have the final abode of entering into paradise, and as we know that the Qur'an of you began has that fine balance. That ayat which talked about the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
كَتَبَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ الرَّحْمَةِ Allah subhanahu has written it upon himself, he's going to be merciful. A lot of Muslims, they sway towards that. Allah subhanahu is ghafoor rahim no problem, I've done this, I've done that, Allah subhanahu will forgive me. But look at the tawazun. At the same time you find many of those ayat which talk about the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, iqab. He's surveying punishment. Stern and harsh. Those ayat, then we begin to miss them. Ayatul zajr, ayatul adab. Verses of punishment, verses of warning, severe warning. So we need to balance it out. Not just go towards the compassionate side and then begin to become neglectful of our actions. So that's why we need to find that balance, focusing upon both ayat. That's the Prophet Muhammad mentioned. If you knew what I knew, that the hiktum qalila wa la bakaytum kathira. If you knew what I knew, you would laugh seldom. You would hardly ever laugh. And you'd weep often.